In this lecture, we're going to cover scatter plot, correlation, and regression line. First, look at uh, what's a scatter plot. Scatter plot is plot of order pairs where we use the horizontal axis for x and the vertical axis for the y variable. How is the scatter plot helpful? Once we finish the scatter plot, the pattern of the plotted points will enable us to see whether there is a relationship between the two variables or not. Let's look at this example. The study time and the midterm exam scores of random sample of 10 students are given below. We want to draw the scatter plot. We're basically going to plot the order pairs per student. So 3 and 57 for student A, 4 and 65 for student B, and so on and so forth. So the final scatter plot will look like something like this. So in this example, I used the study time for the X and the midterm score for the Y. What's a regression line? Regression line is the graph of the regression equation. Now you say, what's a regression equation? Regression equation describes the best linear relationship between the two variables, x and y. The regression equation is usually written in the form of y hat equal to a plus bx. So it is very similar to a slope intercept form of a linear equation in two variables. So how do we compute a and b? We're going to compute the summation of x, the summation of y, the summation of xy, the summation of x squared, and the summation of y squared. It is recommended to do this within a table so we can organize our information. Now that we have these values, we can use the following formulas. This is a formula for B, and this is a formula for A, where N is the number of order pairs in the problem. So let's look at our previous example of randomly selected 10 students with their study time in hours and a midterm score. We want to find the equation of a regression line in which x would be the study time and y would be the midterm score. Once we're done, we're going to draw the regression line and the scatter plot in the same coordinate system. We first identify that n is equal to 10, the number of students, and then we find and verify the summation of x, the summation of y, the summation of xy, the summation of x squared, and the summation of y squared. We apply these values in the formula to find b, and rounded to three decimals, we get the value for B.
And now we're going to use the formula for A. We apply those values again. And the value for A is now computed. So the equation of the regression line, which we said is y hat equal to a plus bx, since we already found a and b, so the equation is expressed that way. Now let's look at the graph of the regression line as well as the scatter plot in the same coordinate system. So as you see, the line is very close to some of the points, but is not as close to other points. We will discuss this in more detail shortly. Now, what's the correlation? A correlation between two variables is when there is a apparent association between the values of one variable with the corresponding values from other variable. So what's the linear correlation coefficient? The linear correlation coefficient is a numerical value that measures the strength of the linear correlation between the pair values of x and y for all values in the sample. The linear correlation coefficient is denoted by r and is usually rounded to three decimal places. So here are some properties of linear correlation coefficient r. The value of r is always going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. It's not designed to be used for nonlinear relationship for all order pairs. In the sample. It's only used for a linear relationship between the x and y's for all samples. It is sensitive and changes value if the sample contains any outlier. The linear correlation coefficient is considered significant if its absolute value is fairly close to 1. So the closer it is to 1, the more significant it is linearly. Now, how do we compute R? Once again, we're going to find summation of x, summation of y, summation of xy, summation of x squared, and summation of y squared. And then we use this formula, which looks very scary. In this formula, again, n is the number of ordered pairs in the sample. Now usually R is calculated with a computer software or a calculator. Now looking at our example of 10 randomly selected students for their study time and midterm score, we want to find the value of the linear correlation coefficient r. We, ver we first identify that n is equal to 10, 
and then we verify the earlier values, the summation of x, the summation of y, the summation of xy, the summation of x squared, and the summation of y squared. We apply these, formula, uh, these values into the formula. We double check our work. We go step by step. And it turns out that R rounded to three decimal will be 0.959. So as you see, R is very close to one. So the linear relationship between the X and Y in our sample is considered to be significant. Now, what's the coefficient of determination? The coefficient of determination is a numerical value usually provided in percentage that indicates what percentage of the dependent variable y is explained by the independent variable x. The coefficient of determination is usually denoted by r squared. So to compute r squared, we simply take the value of r, square it, and then convert it to a percentage by multiplying it by 100 or simply moving it the decimal point two places to the right. Again, looking at our example of 10 randomly selected students, we want to find the value of coefficient of determination and explain what this number describes in our example. We already found the value of r in our previous example. All we need to do is square this number and take this uh, final answer and round it to, you know, three decimal places and then convert it to a percentage. So what this means is 92% of the midterm scores are explained by study time. The other 8% are unexplained. It could be due to other factors that are not explained in the problem. Now, once again, using our last example, we want to find a value for the expression r times square root of n minus 2 over 1 minus r squared, and if needed, round it to three decimals. Now, you will see later on this expression uh, in another uh, concept, but for right now, it is only for purpose of uh, calculation. So by this time, we already know that n is equal to 10, r is equal to 0.959, and r squared is 0 0.920. We're going to apply these to our expression that we needed to compute. Simplify piece by piece. And our final answer is 9.59. Once again, the value for this expression will be used later on once you do regression line testing. But for now, it's only for the purpose of uh, computing it. Now let's look at prediction, which is inferential statistics. We have done all the calculations, all the organizing, which is descriptive statistics. But now we're going to do inferential statistics using 
the results of descriptive statistics to make predictions to do inferential statistics. When linear correlation is significant, we use the regression line for making predictions. We basically plug in the value of x, do a little bit of calculation to make a prediction value y. Now, when the linear correlation is not significant, we're simply going to use y bar. Now, how to determine if the linear correlation is significant or not would be later on when you study regression line testing. But for now, the problem will tell us if the linear correlation is significant or not. So if it is significant, we use the regression line and plug in the value for x. And if it's not significant, we basically use y bar. So in this example, eight pairs of data yield the regression line equation of y hat with y bar given. What's the best predicted value for y when x is 5.5 if we assume the linear correlation is significant? We're told in this example that linear correlation coefficient is significant. So in that case, we're going to use the equation of the regression line. And we plug in x equal to 5.5 to make the prediction to find the value for y. We follow order of operations and we simplify. So we predict when x is 5.5, y will be 71. So our prediction value is 71. Now let's look at another example. 10 pairs of data yield the regression line equation of y bar given with y bar is 58.5 and the regression line equation is y hat equal to 73.5 minus 4.5x. What's the best predicted value for y? for x equal to 4.5 if we assume the linear correlation is not significant. So in this problem, we're told that linear correlation coefficient is not significant. So we're going to use y bar as the prediction value. Regardless of the value for x, the answer would be y bar. So there is no plug-in and there is no calculation. So our prediction value here is 58.5. I hope this uh, brief presentation helped you understand scatter plot, correlation, and regression line.